Alice Lofthouse, I'm the director of ALD Design and Print. As a company we progressed from Automaker 2, which was upgraded to 2 Plus, then 3, um, we've had the Automaker S3 for about four weeks. We saw it in an exhibition um, and were immediately um, impressed by the step change between the other machines. Uh, what I, my own opinion, and I've used it for months, it's the difference between a hobbyist machine and its moves to a professional production machine. Um, the aspects I like with it are the uh, better display and interface, uh, the flow monitoring, which is any problems with the plastic, it uh, tells you about it and sort out, the better load characteristics about loading plastics on, um, the near field um, aspects of it, that loading data of the plastic seems to be a lot better, um, pink quality appears better and we've been using it for a month and we've only had one failure which we suspect is due to incorrect um, support uh, being specified. Um, so we're very impressed with the machine and we think it's, made, it's, a, it's a great improvement on the, on the previous machine which in their own way the previous machines were leaders in the category of small 3D printers. So we acquired a Ultimaker 2 um, in early 2015 as part of a grant we received from the local development agency where we were going to turn the company digital. I thought initially we would get a 3D printer and do 3D printing for clients just like we do leaflets or business cards. That's not quite the way it's, it's gone. We've ended up sort of producing a sideline for the business. Initially, I thought I'd do something fairly straightforward. So in our office, we have this um, uh, train lamp that we had acquired. And I decided to cab that and print it on the Ultimaker. Uh, and that was the result. And that probably took about two to three hours of CAD. Um, so I was quite happy with that. Uh, I've actually sold a few. I then decided that I needed to do a more complicated project and um, a customer had, had these plans copied in our shop of a small locomotive made by a Sheffield company called the Yorkshire Engine Company and this locomotive built in 96, the company is long since gone and I thought that was going to be a basis of some more CAD and some 3D printing. Fairly quickly we printed some Formby size versions of the locomotive, I put it on various uh, four rooms and got some orders for about 20 of these locomotives uh, but that's how it looks if you just took it up from the automaker this was done on the 2 plus at that point we'd upgrade our 2 to a 2 plus um, it is about a day's printing um, but you can just produce uh, 5 to 10 a week but the great thing about the CAD is okay it was in that size but equally we could do the next size up this is gauge 1 which is used in Garden Melways and we even back here made a large one that will pull seven adults it's five inch gauge so it's one of these railways that's one of these trains are going to the railways where you um, you sit the kids can go and ride around the park or whatever we got a commission last year uh, this is from a, an organization in newcastle they had a large exhibition of a coal mine with a working railway system and they wanted uh, some working uh, coal wagons the complication was they wanted them to operate so what we have is little doors then uh, um, the coal goes into the top of the wagon um, and then when they get to the power station wherever they're going um, someone will get this door open by using the handle and what we actually have got is working mechanisms to make both doors work again they're printed on the automaker 3 uh, we've got a few metal parts and in fact the bodywork was done as one piece printed upside down on the glass um, and again they used outside we had to use ABS so it was a bit challenging but once we got going we produced about 10 in one go. We've got. Uh, another thing we use the automaker for is to make uh, patterns or templates for backforming so with this train here we've got flush fitted glazing uh, that looks like that and we have a uh, top of the cab that's got a clear plastic which is illuminated which we actually back form as a clear paint uh, and we use the automaker to make the forms which are then uh, used in the back form machine 
Uh, we have to use ABS for this because the PLA will actually melt at the temperatures which is near 100 degrees. So on the roof area here, we've got a template uh, pattern made on the automaker and we've been experimenting with casting the roof in sections that will be a lot quicker uh, to produce than 3D printing and probably cheaper as well. We've done a project to do with uh, full-size trains which makes a nice change. Uh, in this case we had a company who were uh, making brake pads for a train that was probably about 60 70 years old and they couldn't um, they couldn't produce the patterns or the plans um, so they gave us a very rough CAD drawing from which we turned it into uh, a 3D SDL uh, and on the Ultimakers 2 and 3 we actually printed it, we actually had to print it in three sections because it was so large we then super glued it, uh, filled it this component then went to a casting company in Sheffield who produced sand uh, moulds and have produced the final cast a brake pad which is then machined. Um, we did this uh, for a cost that they said it was half a standard pattern make and we did it in a week. So the clients had been quoted a four to five month lead time. I think where we're gonna go as a company is more projects like this one where we've uh, researched it, we've done the CAD, we produced a working prototype and then we hand the whole project over to, a, uh, I'd like to say, a proper welder company, a proper model welder company, who will then produce us uh, as kits.